God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Fifth glorious mystery, contemplate the crowning of Our Lady, Queen of Angels, Queen of all the saints. We pray especially for Cardinal Gregory, Bishop, and for Monsignor Watkins, the pastor of this place. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <laughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, We fly to your patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us from all dangers, O ever-glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Saint Joseph, Saint John, Saint John Henry Newman, all the saints, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the victory of God, the glory of God in all the saints that are in heaven. A multitude that we cannot count, said the Bible says the Bible. And we are invited tonight to rejoice in that truth, in that fact, and to somehow in our own way, through faith and the sacraments, to participate in that glory. For that to happen, let us open our hearts through repentance, through conversion to his grace. I believe, excuse me, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift 
we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints. Bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal. 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. 
Blessed are they who are persecuted, persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Some years ago, I was in Portland, and I received this Halloween reaction. I was walking in my cassock in the, in the, close to the parish, and someone said to me, nice costume. And I thought, I guess he doesn't believe that I am a priest. And dressing as a priest is not a costume, of course, but it expresses an identity. You know, when we use a costume, as we see these days, we walk away from our identity. We hide behind a costume or a mask, and that is great if you do it for fun once in a while, nothing wrong with that. But generally speaking, as Christians, we are called to be who we are, to grow in authenticity, to show more clearly, more authentically who we are. And the holier we become, the more ourselves we become. The saints in heaven are are all interesting, all unique, each one of them having reached the best version of themselves, having grown to the full stature of Christ. The white robes described in the first reading are no costumes but, or uniforms, but they express the light that each one of them reflects from God in a different and a personal way. They reach the full version of what they were called to be in this life. The second reading says, what we who are walking in this life shall be has not yet been revealed. What a promise. What we will be has not yet been revealed to us, but it has been revealed to the saints, to the ones who are in heaven. They reached that vocation, so to say, that stature that they were called to, to reach. Today we celebrate all the saints, the feast of all the saints. It's a big celebration for the Catholic Church. We don't focus on one saint, but all the saints together. We celebrate the big ones, the most famous ones, like you know, St. Paul, St. Francis, St. Dominic, Ignatius, Teresa of Avila, and the like. But with them, all those saints who did not get canonized, but are in heaven anyways. The first reading says that they are a great multitude, which no one could count, from every race, nation, people, and tongue, standing before the Lamb. A great multitude, millions of people who are already in heaven. So tonight we celebrate in the first place the holiness of God, the glory of God, the power of God, the light of God that has been somehow bestowed upon this multitude of people that are already in heaven. And we celebrate not only their numbers, but also their diversity, so to say, every race, people, and tongue. The church was born diverse at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit brought so many races and tongues together offering for a moment at the beginning what would be the end, our home, a glimpse of heaven, where there will be the richness of diversity with the joy of unity in God. No suspicion, no enmity, no division, but mutual enjoyment in God, who is all in all. The church is like, if you can picture this image, like an inverted pyramid. The church we see, the pilgrim church, is, small, is the small part of the smallest part of the whole church. It's an apex, it's an angle, the inferior angle. But there's an invisible part of the church that has made it to heaven. It's the biggest part. And there are millions, millions and millions. And today we celebrate 
their victory and their company for us. In one of his Oxford sermons, Newman, Cardinal Newman, St. John Henry Newman, he wrote, the rain falls and the wind blows and showers and storms have no existence beyond the time when we felt them. They are nothing in themselves. But if we have but once seen any child of Adam, we have seen an immortal soul. It has not passed away as a breeze or sunshine, but it lives. Every single individual in this history of mankind has an eternal destiny with his, whole, his or her own uniqueness. And today we raise our hope that many of those are in heaven. Millions of immortal and individual souls, unique, unique in their beauty, in their personality, shining with the light of God, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. In heaven we will find many saints of whom the world doesn't know anything about. Pope Francis called them the middle class of holiness. I like that expression. Many of these middle class saints, because we can also you know, have this aspiration to belong to this middle class of holiness. Many of these uncanonized saints, in fact, might be very important in heaven. Because holiness is not so much a matter of what we do, but how much love and faith we put in what we do. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said this very clearly. She, she, she said this, it is not how much we do, but how much love we put in the doing. That's more important to Almighty God. Maybe I can peel only potatoes, but I must do that peeling of potatoes beautifully. That's my love for God in action. And she's one of the biggest in heaven. But she said that to us. You can only peel potatoes. Do it with love. Do it beautifully. And you can become a saint. We can all become a saint. In this book, The Great Divorce, C.S. Lewis, uh, like a contemporary Dante, he imagines a tour into heaven. So there's this guide and this visitor. And they find in one of the chapters this very important lady preceded with an impressive procession. And the visitor imagines or thinks that she might be our lady because she was you know, preceded with so many people. And I will, read, I will read from him now. First came bright spirits who dance and scatter flowers. Then on the left and right came youthful shapes boys upon one hand and girls upon the other. Between them went musicians, and after these a lady in whose honor all this was being done. Is it, is it, I whispered to my guide. Not at all, said he. It's someone you'll never heard of. Her name on earth was Sarah Smith, and she lived at Golders Green. She seems to be, well, a person of particular importance says the visitor. Yes, says the guy. She is one of the great ones. You have heard that fame in this country and fame on earth are two quite different things. And who are all these young men and women in each side? They are her sons and daughters. She must have had a very large family, sir. Every young man or boy that met her became her son even if it was only the boy that brought the meat to her back door. Every girl that met her was her daughter. So the idea, this is Sarah Smith of, that no one knew anything about, just an ordinary person like all of us, became a great saint in heaven, preceded by all these people whom somehow have benefited from her love on earth. She did the daily things with love, with faith, with trust in God. And under the eyes of God, this is very important. So tonight we celebrate all the saints that are already in heaven. They made it. We are like that crowd cheering at the finish line of a marathon. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever been there, but 
they are cheering, or, or maybe better, we are like the ones who are running behind them, and we are happy that someone is already there, and because when, then we think, now, I will be there at some point. And we, we praise God in his power to sanctify, to raise us up into communion with him. But it is not only a day to praise God for his victory, but it's also a reminder for ourselves that we are called to holiness as well. You know that Second Vatican Council reminded about this truth in one of the documents, the Lumen Gentium. It says, fortified by so many and such powerful means of salvation, all the faithful, whatever their condition or state, are called by the Lord, each in his own way, to the perfect holiness, whereby the Father himself is perfect. All of them, all of us, whatever their condition or state, we are called by the Lord personally, each one in our own way, to holiness. It's what theologians call the universal call to holiness. And we should not be afraid of this call or resist it. On the contrary, we should give our best to follow the promptings of the Spirit that once in a while, and I'm, I'm sure you felt this from inside, we feel this prompt to be more, you know, more detached, more generous, more prayerful, more trusting in God. The Lord works from within. If we come to Mass, we receive the sacraments. If we pray, we read the Bible, we participate in the community. I'm sure we feel this movement from inside once in a while, like, okay, you can do this, you can do that, or you can walk away from this or that. Holiness is not so far away from, from where we are, from our daily experience. Right? We're not so far away from holiness, from our own holiness, from the one that we are called to somehow embrace and receive. Because if we were so far away, how could we ever even try to achieve it or receive it from God? If it's a call for myself, for my personal uniqueness, it has to be more or less close to where I am now. Imagine for a moment, if you were a saint today, if you were a saint already, how would your life look like? Probably not so different. You would do the same things that you're doing. You would study, you would work, you would hang out with friends, play sports, you know, take care of your family, endure your crosses. But you would be somehow like penetrated by the grace of God. More. Others around you would perceive a note of joy, of generosity, of Christ-centeredness purity, of acceptance, of interest on others. Don't we long for that? Don't we want that for our lives, to keep doing what we're doing, but more united with God, more in communion with the Trinity? Don't we want that? Aquinas was, was approached once by her, his sister, who asked him how what did she have to do to become a saint? She wanted to be a saint. So she asked her brother, what should, what should she do? And he said, want it. Want it first. So if we want it, what should we do? We pray. We pray for it. We honestly and authentically say, Lord, make me a saint today. Give me the grace that I need to be faithful to your Holy Spirit transform me into someone more like you and also into someone more like myself. That is the paradox of holiness. If we pray like this, it will happen. Not to say that we won't experience you know, the power of evil as well in our life, but we will be sanctified daily by the grace of God and we will allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. If we aim to heaven, then heaven comes down to us, so to say. Because it's simple. God wants us holy. 
And if we want to be holy, then it happens. We are united with the will of God. There's a reason why the gospel today is about the Beatitudes. It begins by blessed, by proclaiming us happy, blessed, if we aim to heaven. Blessed are you if you are more like Christ, little by little, if you want to be more like him, poor in spirit, meek, righteous, merciful, clean of heart, peacemaker. Even if that entails some hardships. After all, the saints, according to the first readings, are those who have survived the great distress. But they were faithful, and even in trials, even in difficult times, we pray, Lord, make me faithful in the things that I have to face today. I don't have to go anywhere you know, distant or do something strange to become a saint. Just have to walk my path, but with you, united with you, with the means that you give me for holiness. And remember, the, the gospel today ends with the reward. The Lord says, your reward will be great in heaven. Now we are going to renew our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of Christ Jesus, the hope of saints and sinners, let us offer our prayers to the Father. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Gregory, and all who serve the Church, that their ministry among us may build bridges from this life to the eternal life of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Church and our parish family, that we may become a people of the Beatitudes, seeking God's presence and joy in all things. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families and households, especially for children, that the saints may inspire them to seek the love of Christ in all things. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners who are ill or recovering, especially those afflicted by the coronavirus, for all those who are imprisoned, abused, or suffering in any way, that they may be delivered from every evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the peace of Christ, that the company of the saints may welcome them into the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we now make in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Father, make us children of your light. May the lives of the saints give us hope through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, 
rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard unite and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith remember Lord your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you for them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our, Lord, of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual, and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved son our lord jesus christ on the day before he was to suffer he took bread 
in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Most especially, we pray for Jerry Thiessen. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us, also your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, 
not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter out of my But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us all rejoice in the Lord as we celebrate the feast day in honor of all the saints.
thank you, Lord, for this Holy Mass. We thank you for renewing, renewing your invitation to be holy, for raising our hope that you have the power to make us holy, that you win over our brokenness, that our sins in our lives don't have the last word, but that you have the last word, Lord, that you purify us every day, you cleanse us with your blood, you fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to walk step by step towards heaven. Thank you, Lord, for renewing our hope in the heavenly Jerusalem where you will receive us someday. Lord, let that hope come upon us today. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland, through Christ our Lord. Good evening, everybody. I just have one announcement this evening, and that's that this Friday, November 6th, is the first Friday of the month, and so we'll be having a holy hour here at St. Anne's. Everyone is welcome to join us for adoration, and we will begin with a rosary at 7.30 p.m. Thank you. So you're all invited to come to pray and to adore the Lord in the Eucharist. Also, we had a baby here in this night that we can hear, right? So we welcome babies in this church. We don't complain. So if, I don't know where the parents are, but if you felt uncomfortable, 
but forget about it. We're happy to have babies. It's always a sign of hope, uh, although you know they can interrupt a little bit, but they're welcome anyways. I will give you a solemn blessing, so bow your heads. The Lord be with you. May God, the glory and joy of the saints who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Freed through their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor so that together with all you may possess the joys of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We may go in peace. <laughs>